Weather is about to get very active across the United States, where multiple rounds of severe storms will be possible across a large chunk of the United States, including damaging winds, large hail, and even some tornadoes across parts of the United States. And then in addition to this, we're going to have the potential for a tropical wave that could develop into a tropical storm or hurricane as we go later into this week and into the weekend, and that could impact the United States. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about this crazy weather pattern that we're going to be dealing with for the next seven to ten days we are going to begin though first with what's happening across the united states right now and it's actually pretty interesting what we got going right now we've had lots of thunderstorms over in the southeast over the last 24 hours we've had some thunderstorms even back up in iowa which were pretty interesting yesterday we had a couple of storms up there that were actually able to produce some rotation maybe even had a brief tornado just to the east of des moines yesterday evening so that's something that will probably be surveyed later today but it was relatively brief in nature but overall, all this activity is going to be moving into the Midwest and as well as the Ohio Valley, which could lead to some more significant severe weather later today and as well as into the evening hours. And we'll talk more details about that here in just a couple of minutes. Back over in the Northeast, this is not really something that we've talked about a whole lot in the last few forecasts, but it's pretty interesting. We actually have a low pressure system that is spinning back to the Northwest right now, which has actually brought some cloud cover and even a few showers across parts of New England and even back over just just offshore. So it's been pretty interesting seeing this kind of develop and evolve. Uh, it has actually intensified as a low pressure system by a little bit, but it is expected to weaken here over the next 24 hours. Just kind of a little subtropical low that's moved off to the north, not anything like a tropical storm or anything like that. Now, further to the southeast, you might not see anything right now, but as we go later into this week, I would not be surprised if we do have a tropical depression or storm that moves across parts of the lesser and greater Antilles, and that might even move towards Florida or the east coast. Coast, and we're going to talk more about that later in this forecast. Now, we're going to talk more about the severe weather threat and as well as the tropics in just a couple of minutes, but I do want to point out the jet stream, which basically controls the weather patterns that we have across the United States, and the reason why we are going to be seeing an increased level of severe weather over the next several days across much of the northern plains, the Midwest, and even back into parts of the Dixie Alley is because of this ridge and as well as this northwesterly flow. This is going to allow for several rounds of severe storms storms to develop across parts of the central and northern plains, and those will eventually trickle into areas like the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, and eventually into the Northeast as well as we go later into this week. So this weather pattern is just going to continue really all week long, so expect multiple rounds of severe storms. Now, in nature, we are not expecting any major outbreaks, at least as of right now, but there will be a potential for maybe a few mesoscale convective systems, which basically just means lines of thunderstorms, or I would not even rule out maybe a potential potential for a derecho sometime this week. So, and if a derecho were to occur, it's really unknown of where it would happen. A lot of what we're going to be seeing this week is going to be small mesoscale features, which are harder to forecast anywhere beyond three or four days out. So just keep that in mind. Once we go into Thursday into Friday, we are likely going to see a trough develop back over in the Midwest. This will allow for some more severe weather, which will eventually move into the Northeast and probably New England as we go into the weekend. And then by next week, we are going to see that ridge move all the way back out to the West. And this could be classified as a death ridge per se, which basically means that we'll be dealing with an extensive heat wave across much of the United States. That could also open the door for a tropical system to move up the east coast of the United States, and that troughing feature might be able to grab that and move it off to the northeast towards areas like New England. And we're going to talk more about that later in the forecast, because that's something that's going to have to be broken down in its own segment. Now let's talk more about that severe weather potential for the next few days, and we'll begin with today, which is actually a pretty large area. You might have noticed by the thumbnail, it is a very large area that we're dealing with today for at least a low to low medium risk for severe weather. Depending on where you are, a lot of this could be pretty sporadic. A lot of it will be mostly just isolated damaging winds anywhere from the Dixie Alley all the way back through the Northern Plains and even leaking into parts of Canada. But we have two areas that we're really focused on today, the first of which will be back over in North and South Dakota and Nebraska, and then the other one will be back over in parts of the Ohio Valley, and I wouldn't be surprised if this area does grow a little bit, but it depends on how the storms do develop later today and how models kind of, you know, throughout the day kind of trend, because at this point, the line of storms that we are expecting later today is likely to form somewhere over here in Illinois or Indiana. Where that exactly forms is uncertain, but we do think the greatest risk for severe weather will be right here in southern Indiana, southeast Illinois, and as well as parts of central Kentucky. 
Kentucky. Now, the main concern for today in nature will be damaging winds. We do have a hatched area in the northern plains, which does mean that we could see some damaging winds that are as high as 80 to 85 miles per hour. There are two different areas that we're going to be watching for today for a low-end tornado risk, the first of which will be in North South Dakota and as well as Nebraska, and then the other one back over in parts of Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and even parts of Tennessee. It's a relatively low risk, and it's going to vary where, depending on where you are today. It could be earlier in the day or it could be tonight, so keep that in mind. We'll talk more details about that here in just a second in terms of timing. Now, once we go into tossing trampolines on Tacos Tuesday, we have another large risk for severe weather. We got another large threat anywhere from North Dakota and Canada back into South Carolina and North Carolina, with the main focus of severe weather being in Iowa, Missouri, and as well as Illinois. The main concern across the board will again be isolated to scatter damaging winds. Some large hail will also be a possibility, and then our tornado risk is overall low, but not zero if you're back over in parts of the Midwest. And I know it's a lot to take in. Overall, it's a very large area for both today and tomorrow, but luckily the risk, at least for now, is on the lower side of things. Now, today's tornado risk is overall going to be pretty low, but there is going to be a general gist of when and where this tornado risk will take place. This morning, it's mostly going to be across parts of central and southern Illinois. It's a very low risk, though, this morning and into the early afternoon hours. The only way we really get a tornado anytime between now and like three o'clock would be from a line of storms that is already ongoing. That could pose the threat for maybe a quick tornado or two, in addition to some damaging winds. But as the atmosphere starts to destabilize again this evening, we are going to start to see another tornado risk evolve, probably between parts of central and southern Illinois, back even into Kentucky as we go later into the evening hours. So be mindful of that. I think the greatest threat overall will be out of those initial storms that fire up, and those should fire up sometime during the very late afternoon, all the way up perhaps into the mid to late evening. And the timing of when it fires up is still uncertain, but I think we'll have storms firing up sometime between about 6 o'clock up to about 10 or 11 o'clock back over in southern Illinois and southern Indiana. And the greatest threat I think will probably be right in this black circle. So again, basically southeast Illinois and as well as southwest to Indiana. Now here's the timing for today. So we'll have that line of storms moving through this morning. Again, it's relatively just going to be damaging winds, maybe an isolated tornado. Once we go later into this afternoon, that line will continue to weaken as it moves into Kentucky and Tennessee. We should start to see the atmosphere destabilize again, and we should start to see some storm initiation around 7 or 8 o'clock tonight, maybe even an hour or two earlier than that. And that will eventually turn more into a line or at least a cluster of thunderstorms that will be mostly capable of damaging winds, but maybe an isolated tornado or two with this activity. And then by the overnight hours, this moves into Kentucky, and then eventually that will move into North Carolina and as well as eventually into Northeast Tennessee as we go early into Tuesday morning with mostly just a damaging wind threat. So overall, we might be live today. I'm not entirely sure yet, but if we are live, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. Now, going into Tuesday, we're going to have a threat of severe weather in the central and northern plains and again in the Midwest. We'll begin with the central plains for tomorrow, and overall, we're not going to really see much during the morning. By the afternoon, we'll see a couple of storms more than likely form over in Nebraska. Since these will be discrete, I think we have a better shot here of hail, wind, and maybe even an isolated, you know, maybe photogenic tornado back over in northern Nebraska. So maybe a good chasing day if you are a storm chaser. Once we go into Tuesday across the northern plains, we'll be dealing with a couple of areas to watch for. Again, one being Nebraska, as we pointed out, and another one back over in North Dakota. The primary concern, again, will be isolated wind, hail, and then maybe even an isolated tornado in either North Dakota or even back over in northern Nebraska. Now, tomorrow's tornado risk in the Midwest is going to be relatively conditional and again it's a very low risk as of right now but what we're going to be watching for during the afternoon will be a couple areas one of which will be in Wisconsin and then the other one back over here in central Iowa it's going to be again a relatively low risk but if any storms can stay discreet I wouldn't be surprised if we do have at least one tornado tomorrow so as we go into the afternoon hours we're going to have a couple areas to watch for we'll have one back over in central Iowa the other one back over in parts of northern central Wisconsin the one further north will be mostly a wind threat with maybe a brief tornado somewhere in there. And then if we still see a discrete storm during the afternoon in Iowa, that could continue to produce some hail, wind, and maybe even, again, an isolated tornado. Once we go into the late afternoon and evening, that'll probably weaken out, and then eventually as we go later into the evening hours, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of redevelopment of storm activity, but I do want to mention again, mesoscale features like this are extremely hard to predict, even being only 36 hours out. So keep that in mind. Things could change between now and then. We'll have another update for you tomorrow morning in terms of a video.
Yet again, the tropics are heating up. We do have a tropical wave back over in the western Atlantic Ocean that is now approaching the Lesser Antilles. It is not forecasted to develop today or tomorrow, but it might develop as early as Wednesday or Thursday back over in the northern Lesser Antilles, and this could become a tropical storm, and it might move towards Florida. Computer models all over the place right now, which I'll show you that here in a second, but this could literally go anywhere from the Gulf of Mexico all the way back over here to the east, and that could actually ride up the east coast of the United States, bringing some impacts as perhaps a tropical storm or maybe even a hurricane but as of right now it has a medium chance of developing so it's not a guarantee it develops but if it does develop we'll have to be watching this closely in the United States. Now, I'm just going to be blunt with you guys there's been a ridiculous amount of hype around this particular tropical wave there's been no development so far so computer models don't really have a great grasp yet of if it will really rapidly intensify or not or if it'll be an impact to the United States so I just want to throw that out there right off the bat because overall there's a lot of hype around this right now. Uh, again, it could become something big, but we don't know what's exactly going to happen. So first off, I'm going to show you the European model. It's one of two computer models I'll show you. Once we go into Saturday, this will potentially be a tropical depression or storm just off the coast of Florida. And overall, a 1,007 millibar low pressure system is usually not really that concerning. It's usually just a very low end tropical storm. Once we go into Sunday and Monday, the European model has us going up the coast of Florida and eventually going into the Carolinas as just a weak tropical storm. And eventually it kind of just, you know, kind of flirts almost with the east coast of the United States and then perhaps intensifies as we go into like Tuesday or Wednesday back over near New England. Now that's one scenario. Now there are lots of different scenarios but overall the general gist is that it might develop into something weak as it approaches Florida or the GFS model shows literally nothing. So at this point it's really kind of uncertain what will happen. It's still a medium chance of development. If anything changes well you know again we're not going to put any hype out there. There's nothing really to hype up about this right now. There is a chance it goes big. There's also a chance nothing happens so just keep that in mind thank you so much for watching make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you're not already